Hello, today I'm going to be talking about Prosex Silver Schmidt Hammer. It's a completely digital Schmidt Hammer, and they have changed the measuring methodology to ensure that you get the most accurate and precise measurement possible. This has been done by, instead of recording the height the mass of a rebound hammer travels, it instead records the speed it travels as it enters and exits the impact. The hammer itself is one piece with full data logging and customization capabilities. You can choose custom correlation curves and custom data logging options. Operation is via tilt and a single button. And if you need to reset the device, you press the button and push the, the hammer to the ground to take an impact and it will reset. As shown by the icon, you can charge and connect to your computer system to take off logs data and to install custom information using a standard Type B USB cable. I'll be covering Hammerlink software later in the video, but for the moment, this is the method of interview. The Silverschmidt uses an icon-based menu operated with a single button and by tilting the device. I'm going to just run through the icons briefly, then go into a little more detail about how each one is used. One-to-one -one is used to select a single shot mode of the hammer. This mode is used mainly to test correct operation. This mode is used to select the averaging technique used by the hammer and how statistical calculations are made. This icon is used to review data stored in the hammer and also to delete records after they've been taken. This icon is used to select the correlation curve used by the hammer and this icon lets you select your units. We'd normally use MPA in Australia, megapascals. And finally, this icon is used to select the shape of the testing element. In Australia that's a cylinder, but other countries often use cubes or similar shapes. Running through the single shot mode, we are given the option to turn it on, which I will do. And I'm going to now take an impact with the hammer. I do this by pushing the hammer at a 90 degree angle completely onto the concrete surface. It fires and we've recorded a Q value of 51.5. This is primarily a means of testing the hammer's operating. When we want to set up to use the hammer for actual testing, we'll select an averaging method. We don't want the ASTM one, we're going to use the custom one, which I'll demonstrate how to set up a little bit later. So that's the custom curve selection, and we just select that. We can use the centrally located summary icon to look through all the previous data collected. We're also given the option to delete or to review the screen as it stood when the data was taken. That's the summary screen. In order to exit out of the summary screen, you need to scroll all the way to the top or the bottom of the entries. The correlation curve can be selected from this icon. The lowest 10th percentile curve is a conservative curve, good for getting a reliably low value. The reference end curve is the standard European reference curve, and CC is where custom curves are selected. If we step into here, we can see that up to three custom curves can be loaded on this Type PC Schmidt hammer. So I'll select the Oz curve, but I don't want to use that one. Um, I'll set the hammer to use the lowest 10th percentile curve for the moment. Oop, wait a second, we'll step out of there. Okay, um, the unit icon lets you select the appropriate strength unit. MPA is the standard in Australia. 
And finally, the cube icon lets you select the kind of element crushed during destructive testing and how it correlates. So in Australia, that's a cylinder. During standard operation, we will record a measurement series with the Schmidt hammer. First, we need to prepare the surface of the concrete for our test. This can be done using a grindstone or a grinder, and we just want to smooth the surface out and ensure we have a flat, level area to test on. We can check the settings in the hammer by depressing the plunger slightly. And as you can see, we've set it to MPA for the unit, a cylinder, the lowest 10 percentile curve, and a averaging method. We're now ready to take the measurement. In this measurement series, I'm going to take 10 impacts. I push it to the surface 10 times. Each time we get a different Q value, as you can see. Normally, I'd be pushing this with two hands, but because I have to hold the concrete block steady, I'm doing it with one. So that's 10 impact. We now press the central button and we have the option for sigma or bin. I'm going to use the bin and delete the last measurement I've taken. This can be good if you make a mistake or the hammer slips while testing. So we've taken a final tenth impact. And we can now select the sigma symbol and we can view our summary. The X is the average value for Q, S standard deviation, N is 10 number of impacts and the number is the impact number which is the saved number 3509. We have an 18 MPA average strength from the 10 impacts. It's telling us to use the lowest 10 percentile curve. And 0.8 is our cylinder factor. Prosex Hammerlink software is used to download data from your Silverschmidt hammer and also to upload custom correlation curves, averaging methods, and to delete data from the hammer. There is a file menu, device menu, edit menu, and help menu available. And the most useful options are available as a number of courses. Clicking the green icon with an arrow will allow you to download data from the hammer. This is through a virtual COM port. And we now see a summary of the three series I have gathered with this Silverschmidt. We can open any series to get a better view of what individual impacts make it up. As you can see, we have two dark colored series uh, impacts. Each of these is one that was dropped due to the averaging method. We're also able to update any of the settings which we placed during hammer operation to a different value. So we can have different averaging modes, cylinder types. We can also add a carbonation factor, which is used to correct for hardened surfaces due to carbonation of older concrete structures. The small sigma icon on the left is used to update what appears in the summary tab. We can change the median series. So by turning off two of these sigma icons, we can change the summary or we can select everything again. We have a number of output options. We can copy the data as a text file or an image. We can also export to a text file or print the say, or print the image. If we choose to export, we have the option to save a text file. We can also save our project under any name we choose. Finally, we can leave a comment for each series of values. Custom settings can be entered into the hammer from the device menu. The first option is to delete all the measurements. And you'll note that it didn't get rid of the impact data, because that's saved locally. The custom curve setting allows us to create and load custom curves. We can use polynomial or exponential curves. And we're able to tweak any of the data and the range of Q values for which the curve is valid, along with the hammer type. For example, we can look at the Oz curve which is valid between 10 and 60 Q values. 
N is actually a curve crate which was created for young concrete structures. To load them, we select the curve we want to load, and we can select upload. It won't let us upload it again, but it's relatively straightforward to operate. We can also load custom statistics into our hammer. The 10 minimum and 10 maximum with a drop of an upper outlier and a lower outlier is a standard method, but you can use any method you choose. I'm going to set this back to 10, 10, 1, 1. We also have the option to select between mean and medium. Finally, we can upgrade the firmware in our Schmidt Hammer from this program.